Hey everybody, this is John Buck back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. Uh, and in this video we're going to show an example of computing the Continuous Time Fourier series for a square wave and, and walk you through that equation, how you use the Fourier series analysis, Continuous Time Fourier series analysis equation to go from the waveform x of t to the Fourier series coefficients a sub k. Uh, so I'm going to switch over to the whiteboard and just get going. Oh, I should mention first, if you haven't already watched the videos about the eigenfunction and the basic definition of the Fourier series, you should pause this video, put it aside for now, go watch those because this one assumes you've watched those two videos first before you get here to actually apply the Fourier series. Okay, now I'm switching to the whiteboard. Okay, so for this video, here's the example we're going to do. We're going to use, uh, the, we're going to look at a signal x of t that is uh, a square wave that goes up to amplitude 3, on for 2 seconds, and then turns off for two seconds and back and forth. So starting at t equals zero, on at height three, down to two again. And so we want to find the Fourier series coefficients, that is the a sub k's, with a subscript k here. Um, and we saw in the previous video, this is this integral is the definition of how we do it, how we take the signal apart into a sub k, or like the ingredients, how much of each harmonic or each frequency we need to have it to, to make this signal, or to put the, when we put them together in, and cook them with the sum, we get the uh, the signal back out. And so the first thing to decide when you're doing one of these, well, first is, is to figure out, notice what the period is. So I want you to pause the video for a second, think for yourself, what's the period of the signal, and then resume and, and see what, what I have for the, the period. Right, for this signal, the period is four, right? It repeats itself every four seconds. So I start at zero. If I shifted this whole signal over by four seconds, it would be right on top of itself, right? And, and so I could see that, that that's the period four, and that tells me the fundamental frequency is two pi over four, which is pi over two. Uh, so I've, uh, I, I've identified this at the start, which is good to identify, though I usually, in my experience, sort of pro tip, it's usually best to wait till pretty close to the end to actually plug in for omega naught. It's just usually easier to leave it as omega naught when you start. So the first thing is identify the fundamental, the period and the fundamental frequency. And then the next thing is to think about where do I want to do this integral? And what I would do is I would look at the signal and say, is this, in, if the signal is symmetric about zero, or when I say, where do I want to do the integral? I mean, which period of length four, because T or capital T is four, do I want to use? And the two most common choices are to go from zero to T or from minus T over two to plus T over two. The second choice, the one that's symmetric around the origin, is a good choice when the waveform is symmetric in some form, either even or odd symmetry at the origin. And so when I look at this signal, I don't see even or odd symmetry. So my inclination then would be to do the integral from zero to t. So let me update my equation for a sub k, incorporating those choices I just made. Okay, so I'm going to do my integral from one to four, or one quarter, the integral from zero to four of x of t, e to the minus j k omega naught t dt. And so if I want to do this, my next step is then to look at the signal from 0 to 4 and recognize this will be simpler, or I can break this integral down into the sum of two integrals. I can integrate from 0 to 2, and then again from 2 to 4 here. And maybe use my little pointer. So from 0 to 2, the signal is constant. And from 2 to 4, it's constant with height uh, 0. Oh, I broke my signal by highlighting it. I didn't think I could do that. Okay, so let me do let me do that next. Let me break this into the sum of two integrals and then plug in for x of t in each of those integrals. Okay, so this is now my integral. And, and again, just to be clear, very explicit, since this is our first time through, where these values came from, this 3 is that because from t goes from 0 to 2, my x of t was equal to 3. Right, so I'm using that value up there. From 2 to 4... I look at, for the second integral, I say is I go from 2 to 4, the value of x of t is 0. Right? It's just the, the, at the baseline there, so I plug in this 0 here. Okay, so that's where those values come from. Let me clean all that up. But what's nice about that, then, is it lets me simplify things, is I can say, well, this integral from 2 to 4 of 0 is just going to be 0. So I can simplify this to just be the integral from 0 to 2. Okay, so that, that's already made my life a little easier, because I've gotten rid of one integral. And so let me scoot things up so I can keep working from here. And now I look at this and say I can pull the 3 out front, and I'm left with an e to the minus j k omega naught t. Well, that's still basically an integral of the form 
e to the at dt, and so I know my definite integral here is going to be 1 over a e to the at, evaluated at the limits, where for my choice here, my a is equal to minus j k omega naught. Right, that's the thing scaling the t from up here in the integrand. So I can write this out. I'm going to pull the 3 out front, and then I'm going to get a, a 1 over minus j k omega naught out in front. And my integral will be e to the same thing, right? Integrals of exponentials are the same thing from 0 to 2. Okay, and so now to find the definite integral, I plug the limits into my integrand here. And I'm going to bring some of these terms together uh, as well. So I get 3 over minus j 4k omega naught. And then when I plug in, the upper limit becomes e to the minus j uh, k omega naught 2, right? Because it's t that I integrated with respect to, so I'm plugging in for the t, minus e to the minus j k omega naught 0. Well, the 0, e to the 0, though, becomes, this whole term becomes 1. And I'm going to bring this minus sign inside as well. So when I rewrite this next line, Okay, we're a couple steps. I brought the minus sign in front, so I, that's minus 1 has become plus 1, and I'm putting that first, and then an e to the minus j 2k omega naught is the second term here, and I'm left with this. And now my next step is one that should be familiar to us from discrete time linear systems, which is if I have a number minus an exponent, like a, a, a constant, or 1 minus an exponential, I should factor out half the exponential because I'm always trying to get to an Euler's relationship. I'm looking at this saying, if I can factor out half this exponent, I can get something that's the difference of two complex exponentials, so Euler's ought to let me simplify that sum. So my next step is to factor out half of this exponent is e to the minus j k omega naught. So let me, let me do, write that out. Right? And when I do that, the first term becomes e to the plus j k omega naught, because when I multiply these through back together, I would get e to the 0, which is the 1 I'm trying to make. And the second term will become just e to the minus j k omega naught. And now I'm saying, well, that's starting to look pretty Euler-y. That's a mathematical term, meaning as like looking like Euler's relationship. All right, not really. I'm messing with you. But it does look like something we can simplify with Euler's relationship. So let me scoot this up a little bit to make some more room and start a new line. So we have our a sub k here is going to be equal to, I have the same constants out front, but I'm going to simplify the thing in the brackets. Well, pause the video and you tell me. Try to, to remember your Euler's relationship and then come back and see if you got it right. Okay, so it's uh, the difference of two exponentials like that is 2j times the sine. So I get the thing in the brackets becomes 2j of sine of k omega naught. And so now I can uh, cancel a 2 and a j with the first term. And so I can collect all that up, and just about there, finally, with my answer, that the, the Fourier series for this, uh, for this square wave, a sub k, will be uh, 3 over 2k omega naught times the sine of k omega naught times e to the minus j k omega naught. So now is when I would go plug in omega naught. Right? If we scroll back up, we found omega naught before we started, right? all the way back up here omega naught was pi over 2. So let's plug that in. But usually, the, I, I just find I make fewer math mistakes if I wait till I get to something like this before I put in the omega naughts, because otherwise I have like three chances I'm copying over pi over 2, and it, and, and I might combine it the wrong way or drop it at pi over 2 or some, drop the pi out of the pi over 2. So let me plug in for uh, set omega naught equal to pi over 2 and simplify a little bit more. Right, so when I do this, the uh, the twos cancel out in the denominator, uh, and then everything else is pretty much the same. Okay, so here's here's my answer for the a sub k. It's three over k pi sine k pi over two, e to the minus j k pi over two. And so, this is as I, I said in the the Fourier series video. This is a complex number, right? In fact. The way I've written, why I've written it this way, is this first piece here is the magnitude, 
right? So the magnitude would be 3k over pi sine k, uh, k pi over 2. Well, the magnitude of that, because the sine can make it positive or negative, as could negative values of k in the first fraction. Uh, but basically, that first term is telling me how much in an amplitude. If I want to think of it as an amplitude, it could be positive or negative. And then I have a complex exponential where the thing multiplying the j is the phase. So in here, I would say my phase for a sub k, or the phase of a sub k, is minus uh, k times pi over 2. So the, I have what's called linear phase that for each time I increase k, the phase just steps along by minus pi over 2. Uh, so the last thing I might do is I could plug in and maybe plot the magnitude, because that does tell me how much of each ingredient is there. The only tricky one is that k equals 0, I do have to use L'Hopital's rule to solve it. So I'm going to do that quickly and make a sketch on the next page that you can check your answers against, uh, and, and then rather than go through all of it step by step. Okay, so as I plug in each value of k one at a time and evaluate it, uh, I get 3 halves at 0 using L'Hopital's rule as I mentioned, or you can also use the set the original integral equal to 0 and just you're finding the average value over one period would be 3 halves. Uh, is, is another good same shortcut we used in discrete time linear systems to find the k equals 0 or dc term. Uh, when k equals 1, I get uh, 3 over pi because the sine of pi over 2 terms, or plus or minus, becomes 1. And again, I'm plotting the magnitude of a sub k here. So the negative things have become positive just to tell us basically how much of each harmonic, each value of k is it called a different harmonic of the, of the spectrum, how much is there of each of these different harmonics in the square wave. I have uh, none of, of the second harmonic or the fourth harmonic, and at 3, I have 1 over pi. And if I kept going out at 5, it would be even a little less. It would be uh, uh, 3 over 5 pi, uh, so that would be like about one, a little less than 1 fifth even. So this would be 3 over 5 pi, and the same thing over here at minus 5. To give you a, a little spoiler, next week we'll see when we talk about properties that because the signal was real, the magnitude of a sub k is uh, going to be even, an even symmetric. So I know the a sub k's will be even symmetric in k around the origin. All right, so this has been a pretty long video, but I did want to give you a really detailed step-by-step -step example of how do you find the a sub k's from the Fourier transform, or from the, I'm sorry, how do you find the a sub k's for the Fourier series from the, uh, oh, there's my credits, finding the Fourier series, tr series coefficients from the waveform. All right, so uh, that's all for this time. I will uh, see you next time. See you in the next video.